we used uh, Ustream, and their 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 app, like if you're fine using their free app and it being on Ustream, works fucking great. It's stupid easy to use, um, and it can do combination and stuff. If you pay for the pro version, which isn't that much, you can do a lot of shit too. Okay, it's ten o'clock. Yay or eleven? Sorry, yay. Clock still in another time zone. Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing this morning? Good? Yay. I'm speaking again. This isn't Groundhog Day. Um, this talk is How to Not Cheat on Your Spouse, What Ashley Madison Can Teach Us About OPSEC. <clears throat> so, as I was bitching before, here's my About Me slide. I won't waste too much time on it. My profile picture has changed since then. But, you know, if you saw my talk yesterday, you pretty much know all this. Uh, disclaimer, all views and opinions contained within this presentation are my own. They do not present, represent the beliefs and opinions of my employer or any other affiliated organizations. For this talk in particular, that was a very important disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer number two, all information presented in this presentation is for informational purposes only. I do not advocate that you perform illegal activities or cheat on your significant other. Furthermore, I do not claim that, the fault, that these methods will ensure you stay out of trouble with either your significant other or other entities should you choose to use these methods. Um, OPSEC is a very complicated thing. So let's get into a little of the background. What is OPSEC? Uh, operational security, um, or operation security, I've heard it used for both. Um, kind of originates from military, um, though there's a lot of different groups that use it nowadays. Um, I kind of broke it down into three core components. Um, one of them is situational awareness. One is, um, and in the case of OPSEC from the kind of, I'm trying to do somewhat shady things, protecting your identity and protecting information. Um, being able to have a certain level of plausible deniability, being able to do something without having it attributed, um, this is particularly important, you know, I guess in the legitimate sense, it's, per, it's you know, for people who are insurgents and nations that are repressive, this is very important because if they get caught, they can be jailed, killed, worse. I do guess there are worse things than being killed. You could be tortured to death, um, which is like being killed, but worse. So what is Ashley Madison? Does anybody in here not know what Ashley Madison was, is? Apparently it's still going, so apparently it's still an is. Um, that's their motto, life is short, have an affair. It's a, it's, that's grade A um, material right there. Uh, it was an alternative dating site, kind of like Adult Friend Finder, um, which has also recently been breached. Um, but the data is not as much fun to go through um, because theirs was basically emails and passwords. This was the damn mother load. Um, obviously, extramarital affairs, it was expensive. Um, as with most of these freemium sites, you could sign up for a profile for free, but there were significant fees involved in being able to actually talk to anybody, um, assuming there were actually any real people on it to begin with. Um, it's another big bone of contention. Um, last point there. Lots of scam and fake accounts. Um, part of the dump from Ashley Madison included scripts of the bots that they had. Um, as I went through and looked at the information, um, there were a lot of um, IP addresses um, that were associated with not only Ashley Madison um, account, like uh, domain space or IP space, but also with other adult oriented dating sites had people and you would look at the IP logs and you're like, that belongs to this dating company over here. So they were trying to basically siphon people off from Ashley Madison and creating fake accounts. Um, and there's lots of data to review. Um, like I said, this was kind of the mother load. This had everything. So if you weren't aware of what all was in the dump, it was the entire database. All the user profile data, all the user names, um, IPs they logged in from. They have, um, they were nice enough to break it out into CSVs, all the credit purchases with names, addresses, IP it was purchased from. Um, I think it was the last four of the card. I don't think the full card was in there. I can't remember. It's been a while since I had to actually, like, since I read through it all. Um, so who was responsible? So the group that claimed responsibility is called the, uh, called themselves the Impact Team. Um, Unknown hackers who tra targeted Avid Life Media, um, who is the group um, behind Ashley Madison. Um, they could be hacktivists. There's a lot of suggestion that it could have been part, at least partially an inside job. Um, could have just been bored, bored kids because apparently the security was pretty crappy. Um, I'm not going to be playing the attribution game. Um, I, am, I am no good at it, and it is beyond my realm. 
So a couple of important notes, because I haven't had enough. Um, identifying users. Um, Ashley Madison did not validate email addresses. Um, so there are some fun email addresses, some of which I'm sure were perfect, like were legit people actually signing up with their emails. Um, others are very blatantly fake email address. Um, IP addresses obviously can be poor indicators, um, though it's slightly more useful, I believe, in the uh, credit card situation because in those, if you have the IP address and you have an address and that's those spaces overlap, it can be helpful. Um, like I said, best purchases is credit purchases. Not foolproof. Um, people can steal credit cards and do other things, but uh, trust me, there are a lot of repeat offenders on that one. Um, I don't openly identify anyone. Uh, there's no public shaming. There are some interesting stats and stuff from the bulk data. Um, you know, going to have plenty of nice pictures. Um, definitely was. I'm sure there were cheaters somewhere going, what the hell am I going to do? Um, spouses and divorce lawyers. Um, one of the fun things that happened, um, somebody, there was a forum in Northern Virginia, I uh, can't remember the name of the forum now, where somebody posted all the addresses from the credit card list for everyone in Fairfax, Loudoun, and Prince William County, I think, and maybe Arlington and Alexandria. Um, and they published all that data, um, which was kind of interesting because it made it very available to people who otherwise wouldn't have gotten it. Um, I have the full data dump um, from the torrents. One of my friends took the time to download the torrent. Uh, I thankfully have USB um, because I don't have that kind of time to sit on the internet and wait for stuff to download. Um, like I said, no public shaming, um, though I am sometimes an advocate of it. It is. can be a nice deterrent, but in this case, not so much. Uh, this is the other thing, too, um, about public shaming. Um, so there's a lot of people... This list, and some people gave crap about the dump because it did, for some people, reveal sexuality that they probably didn't want necessarily revealed. Not everybody on the site was necessarily married or engaged or tied to another person in any way, shape, or form. Um, so I'm sure there was at least, there's got to be at least one case somewhere in somebody's life who was ruined by this. I just haven't met that person yet. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, fake accounts. Um, yeah, almost 65,000 accounts were tied to IPs that belong to dates in your city. Um, another 33,000 to JDI dating's IP space. Like, not even hiding the fact of where they were coming from. Not like, I'm going to go VPN in and do this, or I'm going to work on this from home. No, they were paying who, their employees or whoever to log into those systems and create fake accounts. Um, lots of IPs are reported as logging in locally. Um, I'm pretty certain that can all be tied to um, tied back to the Avid Life Media people, and 228 plus accounts tied to Ashley Madison controlled IP, like literally the their internet IP space that belonged to Avid Life Media, 228 accounts. So either everybody who worked there was on Ashley Madison, and then some, or there were a lot of fake accounts because they don't have that many people. So, operational security for not cheating on your spouse. Um, I kind of broke it up into four steps. I'm sure there are some people who consider themselves OPSEC experts. I wouldn't say I'm an expert on it, but I have at least have a decent enough understanding to see when somebody's doing something stupid. Um, create a plan for protecting your identity. Um, create a plan for burning an identity. Um, if, you, if you go about the effort to create a fake persona, to go online and to do something illicit, whether it is cheat on a significant other or um, uh, or do some illegal hacking or something like that, be goddamn well ready to burn that shit. Um, nothing comes but pain from from glory. Okay, um, go ask. There's quite a few hackers who can tell you that. Um, acquire materials uh, for your plan execution. Because for the love of God, don't use your existing computer equipment, um, and then execute your plan. So the question has come up before, do I need a burn plan? Um, this is really a risk assessment. I argue that you should. Um, think about who your target, who's going to be targeting you, right? Um, if you're cheating on your spouse, and your spouse has zero technical knowledge, then maybe you don't have to be quite as paranoid and worried, unless, she has, unless you think she has reason to suspect you and could hire a PI, in which case you might want to be scared. 
Um, I, um, I'd be pretty paranoid here if I was going to do something stupid like that because my wife may not be technical, but she knows a lot of people who are, um, including Scott Moulton, who I pretty much would be convinced um, for, through PI and forensics would be able to figure out whatever the hell I may or may not have done. Um, how paranoid are you? Uh, I am generally a very paranoid individual as is. Um, there are some things I'm slightly more lax on, but when it starts getting into more security, I tend to get a little more paranoid. Um, how much trouble are you going to get into if you get caught? Um, you know, it's a, like I said, it's a lot of this is all risk assessment. Um, and then physical connections. Um, you know, online it's very easy to stand up a persona, um, especially if you don't have to backstop it with like physical world data. Um, so this is why I don't get the hackers who can't create a handle and stay hidden. <clears throat> so who cares if you get caught? Um, your ISPs, um, they can shut you down if people report stuff from your local IP. So we'll get into that eventually. Uh, companies that you go after if you're actually doing hacking and you're looking at some of these things, some of these tech companies and stuff may care. Um, if you're doing stuff really illegal, the FBI may care. Um, Odds are, it will, if you're doing something illegal, it will eventually get to them and beyond your local police because most of them are ineffective at this. Um, angry spouse with a frying pan. Honestly, I know a lot of people who'd be more scared of that than of that. Um, it is what it is. So we're going to go through, I think I've got two kind of classic OPSEC failures. Um, and there's there's been a few more uh, since then. Um, I don't remember if anybody remembers this. Um, I can't even think of the guy's name now. Um, well, that's right there. The cabin crew folks. Um, these were hackers down in Australia, if memory serves me right. Um, I can't remember exactly what they did, but then he decided to start taunting them with his pictures of his girlfriend's tits and ass. And didn't actually do a good job cleaning exit data. So they managed to find his dumb ass. Um, you know, just... Taunting never goes, never ends well. I mean, if you look at it, um, um, which one was it? Um, crap. Um, the chat program and the kids in, what was it, Ireland maybe? They got busted for that. I mean, it's, you do stupid shit. Great, you did it. Now if you're going around bragging about it so that you can get praise for it, guess what? You're probably going to get yourself caught. Um, uh, Dread Pirate Roberts. So, I'm not going to get into the whether or not the person they arrested and actually charged is actually the Dread Pirate Roberts. Let me put it to you this way. Based on what they've presented, he probably fucking was. Or the biggest patsy in the history of mankind. Um, <clears throat> use his real image for fake IDs. If you're using fake IDs to buy shit over the internet and not in person, doesn't matter who the fuck's pictures on the fake ID. Um, busted them in with uh, fake IDs in route. Um, reused old uh, identities online. So reused old personas that they are able to tie from one place to another. Um, always ever used VPN. Never really, well, used, obviously did most of the work on Tor. But only use the VPN from familiar internet. Um, We've probably all seen in like the crime programs, you know, they, they create the circle of where people, you know, feel safe. And so that's how they kind of can, trust me, that shit's real. People are stupid. And in a bid to try to feel safe, people will go to places that are familiar to them and where they feel that they're safe. They'll usually exclude an area around their home, but then they won't go beyond a certain radius. And they're prone to repeating locations. Humans are stupid. This is a key example of that. Um, so a lot of OPSEC is just trying to break with normal pattern, making it harder. And again, a lot of it comes down to who's looking at you, right? Um, so creating a plan, right? Um, physical identities, right? Um, these are all very hard, clear things, right? You know what you look like. You know who you are. Um, your names, your appearances, how you pay for things. I mean, how many people in here buy everything, literally everything with cash? Anybody? Nobody in the room? Not surprised. <clears throat> like, I mean, how many people in the room don't use cash for anything? And there's usually at least a couple, right? Like, every, almost everything's on a card, right? 
you might have like every once in a while you get like, straight cash and go buy a candy bar or something with it, but like that's it, right? <clears throat> These are hard to protect and alter. Don't get me wrong, you got tons of money. You can make yourself look like somebody else. Um, but usually not worth the effort. Because anymore everything can be done online. I mean, how are you identified online, right? Personas, emails, IP addresses. This is very controllable information. You can go to Gmail and create an account with absolutely no backstopping whatsoever. You put in a name that could be anything. An email address that's anything that's not already taken. They ask for a phone number you don't have to provide. The only time they'll push you for a phone number, at least from Gmail, is if you're coming from an IP that they consider either shared or has known bot activity. Um, so this crops up slightly more now. I've seen it with it, um, issues of folks who are creating backstop emails um, that if you go, um, most of the wireless providers now are all NATed. Um, and so because of that, most of their NATs get blocked by these. Um, and normally, for most anything, you need an email before you can do any of the other ones. But there's people beyond Gmail who will freely let you sign up without an email address. Um, it's all about how sketch you're willing to go on your email service, too. Um, IP addresses, uh, we'll go into a little bit on, you know, obfuscating those in a little bit. So protecting your identity, right? Um, avoiding cross-contamination. So going back to Dread Pirate Roberts, this is something that was, you know, reportedly failed at. That he basically asked questions that were very centric to what he was going to do in public forums using a... Uh, an online identity that had been previously tied to him. Now, normally, from a legal perspective, that's not enough to catch you, but what are they going to do? Now that they have that, they've got probable cause to get the warrant to go to the company that's then going to give them the IP address, and now you can actually trace back steps, right? Um, so avoid using personas that are similar or the same to what you've used before. Um, avoid using real information whenever possible. <coughs> um, no one said you had to use your real name online, right? We all praise the internet for being anonymous, yet some people insist on using their real name every day. Um, avoiding the predictable patterns, right? Doing the same things. Um, like I said, this is hard for a lot of people. People have levels of comfort, where they're comfortable being, what they're doing. Um, we all have patterns of life, right? Almost all of us have a consistent pattern where we normally probably get up between a set period at least five days a week when we're going to work, maybe more. Um, you know, you, people are set in their minds, right? I have people I work with. Guy walks out to lunch at 11 o'clock every day. I can guarantee when when I look over and he's gone, I know what time it is, right? Um, so people have patterns. Some of it forced on them by their life, um, and others with, um, and others just from you know their own neuroses, um, acquiring things. So like I said, uh, money, right? This is a no-brainer. Don't use a credit card. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Um, this is really easy in the real world because you can use cash everywhere. Um, gift cards that you buy with cash. Um, if that really fails, there's chargeable debit cards that you can get now that you still just put cash on. Um, online transactions get a little easier thanks to Bitcoin um, and other cryptocurrencies. Um, gift cards have started to make that easier. And there's a lot of legitimate places taking Bitcoin now. So it is a lot easier. So what do you do? What did Ashley Madison teach us about money? Um, there's over 9.3 million credit card transactions. Um, like I say, that less than 200 definitively used gift cards. Um, and how do I know they used gift cards? Um, a lot of them put a gift for you as the name in the credit card, or gift card, or they did very clear to delineate this was a credit, this was a gift card, not an actual credit card. Um, some of these people still used real email addresses and real um, home addresses, um, assuming they weren't trying to make it look like their neighbor was doing it. Even if they were using their neighbor's address, they at least were getting it into the same general geographic vicinity of where they lived or where they worked. Uh, I saw quite a few that mapped to office buildings with suite numbers, too. It's like, really? What? Just put the address on a gift card. Fucking most some, If they're not doing any address validation on a gift card, trust me, you can put in pretty much anything. Put in the goddamn post office. There you go. 
that's generally a pretty safe one. Go find a post office and put in that address. It'll be a real address and nobody lives there. Um, don't reuse equipment ever. Um, all these things are cheap now. Um, computers are cheap. Prepaid wireless is cheap. Hotspots are everywhere. There's free Wi-Fi in almost every other building you go into nowadays. Um, yes, I wouldn't do I wouldn't do bank transactions on an open Wi-Fi, but guess what? If you're doing illicit stuff, you're not doing anything open anyway. Um, and cash, 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 and more cash. And yes, you can do prepaid wireless with cash because they all have cards. Um, and computers, I'm telling you, Craigslist and fucking everything else. Um, what else did I learn? Um, there were lots of like the BlackBerry email addresses. Um, people were actually using work devices um, for reasons I don't understand. Um, there was a lot of people whose email addresses were also tied to um, cell phone numbers. So uh, as most of you probably are aware, you can send and receive messages by doing an email. It's typically your phone number at and then whoever your provider is has a different tag. So normally it's like, um, sometimes it's like mobile dot like um, AT&T.com or something like that. So you can do that and push messages to phones that way. So a lot of people had that <coughs> as well. That was very common actually for um, the Korean accounts. There were a lot of .kr um, addresses like that and I don't know why. Apparently the Koreans are unfaithful, I don't know. Um, Shopping options, anywhere that takes cash. Um, pretty much every retail store ever. Um, Goodwill, um, especially if you want something that's already been tied to, that could be tied back to somebody else. Um, don't make a habit of going back. Um, if you're showing up every week uh, at the Walmart to buy a computer with cash, somebody might start being like, why is this guy coming in to buy a computer with cash every other week or month? Um, like I said, if you're on a budget, thrift shops, flea markets, and most of those people won't care and don't ask questions because they're you're buying their crap. Um, more shopping options. Um, Craigslist, obviously, again, people meeting in strange places. Um, Amazon has these lockers now. I don't know how many people have seen them, but you can get crap shipped from Amazon to these lockers. Um, they were very prevalent and um, at uh, 7-Elevens. Um, Grab and go boxes at Walmart. Uh, basically the same concept except you order from Walmart versus Amazon, right? Um, so they're great because that cuts out some of the interaction, inter having to interact with a person in a store, right? So now you've cut out that, that link of if you're doing something really illegal, that witness who says, yeah, that person came in here and bought this. Now I don't know what the, these obviously, this one has, I know that one has a camera. You can kind of see it there. Um, I don't know about the Walmart one, though if you've been in a Walmart, there's a lot of cameras. Um, but this said, um, it's it's a good way to get some of that stuff if you really have to go the retail route. Um, getting online. So this is going to get to the stuff that we all pretty much know, right? I'd hope. Um, like I said, internet is free, cheap, and easy to get access to. Um, if you're going real illicit, air crack, I mean, come on. Most people couldn't come up with a good, solid... Um, password for their wireless if they tried. Um, pineapples, again, forgetting that. So if you want to go the illicit method and you're already going illegal, I don't see why your morality would stop here, right? Um, otherwise, free and cheap, prepaid, or open hotspots. And why do I not care if it's an open wireless? Because we're going to use VPN, um, at least at first. So. Um, the amount of privacy depends, obviously, on the provider and how much you trust them. Um, there are tons of providers who claim to log basically nothing. Um, I've used two different ones with varying degrees of success. For personal things, not for anything illegal. Um, it's encryption, so at least nobody locally is going to see your stuff. But there's not necessarily uh, true anonymity, right? There's still a persona control that's authenticating you to the VPN. Um, so there's still something to say, person with account X logged into VPN. Um, there's still going to be some log there <clears throat> in some way, shape, or form. Um, Tor. This is where we get anonymity. Um, there's downsides to this. Um, if you've seen anything, there have been a couple instances of 
people fucking with Tor exit nodes. Um, there's question as to how secure it is um, and how truly anonymous it can be. Um, it's good for being anonymous, but I wouldn't recommend it as your primary method of uh, doing much of anything beyond trying to browse anonymously. Um, um, it's and you can't you cannot trust an exit node. I don't care what anybody says. Um, even if somebody sets one up in good intent, it's that much easier for somebody to gain access to a lot of traffic. So combine the two. Um, not all VPN services support it. Um, some do allow this Tor VPN hybrid beast to be born. Um, uh, that's just two of the ones that I've heard of in my research. Um, I actually use NordVPN now, um, mostly because it was significantly cheaper than my old VPN service. Um, um, I also like the fact that Nord actually has an Android app. Um, granted, it all just uses OpenVPN, but it's one less thing I have to set up. Um, is different. My old VPN provider, I had to set up OpenVPN for each of the ones, each of their nodes I wanted access to. So um, it was kind of cumbersome. Uh, this, it's just the app. Um, you can build your own solutions. Um, if you do this, you need to remember uh, there are OPSEC things to consider. Again, with VPS, is it's more infrastructure that you're acquiring, more things that you have to deal with. Um, and there's more stuff to burn and forget about if you build your own. <clears throat> it's a lot easier to walk away from a VPN service. It's no VPN, but there were a lot of Ashley Madison users who used AOL as like a dumb proxy. Um, if you're only trying to avoid your spouse, this may work, right? Um, it's not effective against, um, against anyone who's actually going to want to look at your stuff, right? Against the FBI, AOL still knows who the fuck you are. So anyone who can legally compel AOL to tell them who logged on and from where, they're going to get the data. Um, there were about 30,000 accounts that used it this way. I'm sure some of them were probably um, fake accounts. Some of them were also probably legitimate like AOL users. I'm sure they still exist because <coughs> they still offer the service. Um, Euro scammers love AOL as a proxy. So I'd be willing to bet that most of them were fake and trying to use it as means to either filter off people for their own sketchy dating sites or just to filter out money. <coughs> uh, VPS. They're cheap and easy to access. They're quick, they're good to get, to dispose of. I mean, you can spin up an AWS instance in about five minutes. Um, these can be your burn point. Um, if you set it up right, and you're not doing anything on your end computer to besides connecting to that VPS, and you can properly mask that, the VPS can be your burn point. This isn't ideal, trust me. In a real world, if I was doing something illicit, I would probably take whatever computer I used and chuck it in a wood chipper. Um, keep shit segmented. Don't, like I said, this all goes back to not crossing the streams. Don't, don't do anything to tie you know, your physical identity to your virtual one if you want to keep your identity anonymous in any way, shape, or form. <coughs> like I said before, I mentioned email. There's tons of free options. Um, I know mail.com used to be one that also did not require email or phone numbers. Yahoo did. Uh, I don't know about Outlook because who actually uses that? Um, if you do need one that requires validation, prepay phones are your friends. They are cheap. They work for drug dealers. Why can't they work for you? Um, they, I mean, you basically can get one long enough to get a phone number to provide them that they'll validate with you, and then when it's done, you can chuck it. And it will cost you about probably between 10 and 20 bucks for a phone and a $5 air card. And that'll be it. Because that'll be more than enough to get the one text message or one phone call you have to get from any of these. <coughs> The only thing I will say is Gmail. I've noticed this with, um, I was trying to log on to it from the web on my phone the other day, um, was blocking the, um, was blocking the NAT for AT&T. Don't know why, but it was like, I don't trust that you're not a bot. So, which is normally indicative that they don't trust the NAT. And they were like, we want to validate. We need you to, we need to call you. Can we call you to validate the, your, who you say you are? Um, 
So because of that, some of those will try to do that. So that's something important to remember when you're looking at your VPN services. Like um, The ironic thing is, when I did use my VPN on my phone, I don't have that problem anymore. So apparently the AT&T net can't be trusted because there's sketchy people on the AT&T wireless, but my VPN service is solid. Um, I don't get the reasoning and logic, but whatever. What are they thinking? Oh my god. Um, there were corporate emails all over Ashley Madison. Um, like I mentioned before, SMS and email, uh, email providers, um, Blackberry emails, uh, school emails. Um, it's like, hey, I'm just going to use this email. Like I said, some of this you have to take for a grain of salt because Ashley Madison did absolutely no validation of messages, right? <coughs> but there's still the what the fuck. Uh, 12,000 dot mil addresses. Um, any former military people can cheer. Apparently, Army is the winner there. Um, <clears throat> kind of a, kind of surprising to me. I figured sailors traveling the world in boats would be slightly more susceptible, but nope, Army. Um, 220,000.gov addresses, including a couple state and federal employees. Um, honorable mentions, uh, four NSA ones. Uh, three of those I can confirm are fake, blatantly fake. Uh, two CIA ones. Um, the fourth one from NSA may be fake, but it looks more legit than the other three. The other three just look like gibberish at whatever. Um, FBI, there's only two of those that look legitimate. Um, and the reason I say there's only two that look legitimate is um, it's basically um, a bunch of them were variations on Agent Mulder. Um, the NSA ones, oh, I actually do have, I do have in my notes here. Um, one of them was admin at, one was postmaster at, and one was i-trust-u-not at nsa.gov. The fourth one, I don't have the notes down, but was the only one that seemed legit. And I'd like to point out dhs.gov wins. Important to note, TSA agents fall in that category. Um, just saying. So why don't we trust these emails? So, like I said, there was a Joe Biden. Joe was many things, but I don't think Joe would be on Ashley Madison. I do feel like I need memes for that now. And there's Barack Obama. See, I, I need to go back now and add like a Joe and Barack, like Ashley Madison meme. Um, Bill Clinton. Nah, wait a second. That one may be real. Um, and, and like I said, this guy, there was actually, um, it was actually Fox Mulder at FBI.gov was one of the ones that was registered. So, hey, at least somebody was clever enough to be like, I'm not going to use my real email. I mean, I'll give them credit for that. The downside is they probably also just pegged themselves as an X-Files fan. So that kind of, still a big group, but so a couple truths. Um, like I've said over and over again, paranoia, a lot of this is overkill, right? If all you're doing is looking at OPSEC from a, <coughs> from a, I want to cheat on my significant other and not get caught, or I want to do something embarrassing, or from a, from a U.S. person's perspective, um, maybe something not illicit, but let's say you um, are a, um, say you're in the closet. You don't want people at work, people, your family to know, right? This may be something that you do in order to maintain that while still being in the closet. Um, so in most of those cases, this is overkill, right? It's about paranoia, right? Um, most people's personal knowledge will stop their tracking pretty much at being able to follow you around. They may be able to Google search and do a couple other things, but if, and that's what I mean from the online persona perspective, keeping that separate is important because that's a pretty low bar for most people. Um, if you use the same username, Googling is real easy to find people. Everyone knows how to use it now. Um, <clears throat> local law enforcement will still have some limitations, um, but trust me, if it's significant enough, they'll call the FBI and they have plenty of resources. Um, assuming what you're doing is up to par for something they're worried about. Um, companies will generally have pretty limited resources. Um, a lot of them will probably like to be like, no, I've, I've got a full IR team and we'll find out whatever the hell happens. Um, <clears throat> probably not. Odds are they'll wind up contacting law enforcement if they can even figure out you were there. Um, this is where I really start to worry. Um, um, good OPSEC is really hard and it's really expensive. Um, the, um, at a, at a nation state and a national level, um, it's significantly harder to do. Um, 
And it's, um, don't get me wrong, it's not hard. Um, well, let me rephrase. It is hard, but it's not impossible. That's the word I was looking for. Um, there are people who have been known to piss off foreign countries and have managed, and foreign agents who have managed not to be outed and dragged out of their house and beaten by, um, by foreign intelligence agencies. So it works. I'm not going to say it doesn't, but again, paranoia. I have, I has conspiracy theory, which is pretty accurate. <coughs> um, old fashioned cheating is cheaper. Um, if you're thinking about doing this, um, uh, for whatever reason, <coughs> the online fees for Ashley Madison are ridiculous. Um, it was loaded with scams. They, if, if you're trying to hide from your spouse and you can't do so successfully with what you have at home, it, you know, the extra accounts, the VPN, doing all those things to try to hide your identity. <clears throat> and you're still going to have some of the same, um, expenses, right? You're still going to have to go to sketchy hotel rooms. Um, you're still probably going to have random bar dates and rendezvous with this individual. Um, cause everyone needs a little liquid lubrication. Um, inevitable divorce attorneys, cause trust me, this never works out well. Um, not from firsthand experience, but I've seen it. Um, save the money and go to the bar. Um, trust me, if, if you're just going to cheat on your spouse, you're going to have probably about as much chance of getting caught by doing that, and it'll cost you a hell of a lot more money. Um, like the cats. <sighs> like I said, uh, this is a lot of common sense. Um, it's, it, it, it's, um, <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward. I always thought to me, operational security has always seemed like a very logical thing. If I do this, will I get caught? Yes or no? Okay. Um, you just have to expand that knowledge. I think what happens invariably is, what probably honestly happens in most of these cases, and most of the people who sign up for Ashley Madison, I'm sure what they thought is, oh, it's online. My significant other is never going to find out because I'll just log onto my computer when she's not here and go talk to people and whatever. Um, Little did they know somebody was going to go make all that data available. <clears throat> um, so, uh, like I said, a lot of it's common sense, but again, it's also about how much money and how much time you actually need to put into it. Um, so, I actually managed to run through this really fast. I apologize. Are there any questions? Anybody have any questions? Yes, you there. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, I like what you were talking about burner phones, and I was wondering if you. <clears throat> Expand on some of them, like do some work better than others, like uh, with the Samsung Note Seven. Yes. Um, all right. So the question, so the question for those playing the home game uh, is, um, could I expand a little bit on the uh, burner phone and uh, kind of jokingly, would a Note Seven make a good one? Um, my general opinion is that for the most part, smartphones are um, are not good for being burner phones. Um, there's a couple reasons. Obviously, there's all the tracking and other potential things. Um, some of the tracking that they do does exist with standard dumb phones, right? Um, the benefit to it at the same time is if you need an online presence, it can serve as a two-function device. It can serve as your online presence, assuming you don't need a computer to do that, um, and it can serve as a phone. Um, generally speaking, if I was going to have a burner, it was, it would probably just be a dumb flip phone and it would probably literally be for five seconds for whatever I need it for and then chuck it. And in that case, that's more of a, a cost valuation versus a utility. <coughs> Cause I don't, I mean, if you're doing stuff online that you don't want to be caught, like I said, there's a lot of times that you don't need a phone. Um, for most of it, you don't need an ID. There are some online, for every online service provider who wants an ID before you sign up, there's a dozen who don't give a shit who you are as long as they have your money. <coughs> so, um, this said, if you do, if you do go with, you know, virtual services and stuff like that, um, while I love cloud at cost for doing dirt cheap shit when I need to, the fact that I can't just delete the damn thing and walk away would be a prime reason why I would never use it. Granted, you could kill the VM, but, you basically still have the resources tied to the accounts, right? Whereas a traditional VPS provider, I could basically just up and say, I'm turning off all my services. I'm not paying you anymore. 
delete my shit and I'm gone. Um, so, yeah, for the, the phone perspective, I try, I would tend to keep it as cheap and, you know, ineffective as possible. Um, because the reality is, you're, hopefully in most situations, you're going to use it maybe once if you have to get past the email hurdle. And that would be it. Um, like I said, and I just put up four email services. There are, like I said, if you're willing to go shady as fuck, there's plenty of other email services that will do pretty much whatever the hell you want. I mean, I think if, I'm pretty sure mail.ru will let you do whatever the fuck you want if you're willing to put your email address in Russia. That's all I'm going to say. Um, you know, but hey, if you're not attacking Russia, maybe they don't give a fuck either. Um, any other questions here? Yeah? Sure. <coughs> so a lot of this offset uh, suggestions and what have you seems to be targeted more around highly populated areas, such as don't buy your stuff from the same places. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the same free Wi-Fi. I live in a town that has one red line, <laughs> and I'm 45 minutes to an hour away from any other town. All right. Any recommendations? <laughs> Any recommendations when you live when you live in the middle of nowhere? Do you have any OPSEC recommendations? Yes. Um, Does the recommendations change? Is there more or less concern? <laughs> um, you know that could be a really tough one, right? Because this the the issue is so when you've got a small location in a small town, if you have to do anything that is cellular based, you become a lot easier to find, right? There's a lot less noise. Um, <coughs> Yes, assuming you can get cellular service. This guy always has to, this guy's always calling from here and never, wait, there's no cell towers over there. I bet you he lives over there. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, um, it becomes a lot more difficult when you're in a lot less populated areas because a large part of OPSEC is trying to blend in. I think in that sort of situation, what you're going to be looking at is more of going virtual, right? Is having more virtual presence and maybe not just one VPS, but three or four VPSs, right? Where you're, where you're like, okay, I, I trust my connection from here to here, and then I'll use that to go over here, and then maybe I go from here to wherever I'm going to go. <coughs> so instead of going directly to whatever attack methodology. Um, uh, at the same time, so that then raises the question of what do you do locally, right? Um, if going and buying regular hardware is not always going to be a good option, um, Doing some of the stuff on virtual machines on your computer is an option. Granted, this is not a foolproof method, but it goes back to who are you trying to avoid, right? Um, if you're trying to avoid law enforcement, you, you'll probably still eventually they'll find a way. Um, I'd like to think that most of, that they don't necessarily all have VM breakouts that are going to kill you the second they get to the VM if they go that route, but I'm sure some of them do. <laughs> um, the other side to it is. You know, um, like I said, if, if your end goal is to cheat on your spouse, first off, in a town, in a small town, that may be really hard to do. <laughs> everyone knows everyone and where everybody's at. You know, I saw your husband's truck over at, you know, so-and-so's place. Oh, what was he doing over there? Um, but yeah, it's, it definitely becomes a, 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 I think you have to change from a lot more physical separation to trying to separate yourself virtually at that point because it does become harder to acquire new hardware and I mean, because then what do you do, right? Oh, well, I need to get new hardware. Do I have to drive an hour to some place that, you know, may not remember me or know who I am? Or do I, I, you can't order anything and have it shipped to the house. That kind of defeats the whole purpose, right? You've gone straight to, I've tied this to me. Um, so yeah, I definitely think virtual becomes a far more, um, yeah, um, option when you get into that small of a locality. Just like to say from where I came from, in days long past in the government, we started with the premise of if you say it, if you write it down, or if you type it, it's exploitable. Mm -hmm. You started from that premise. Yeah, so. Here's something I didn't I didn't put in there, right? And so, and that's actually a good point. So he makes the point about you know anything that you write or say can be exploited against you, um, and it's very true. Um, people, again, this goes back to people have patterns that are hard to break, right? Um, people's speech patterns are, will repeat themselves. People's writing patterns will repeat themselves. So it's very hard to take on a different persona that will have a totally different um, contextual sense from your actual identity. 
And this can be used to identify people, right? You can look, and they've done research on identifying people through patterns like this, to be able to say, is this, are these two writings from the same individual, right? Um, did the same person say, um, say or write these, these two different, disparate things, right? And while it's, it's not necessarily a hard proof, an uh, answer for them in all cases, it usually at least gets them in a direction where they can now target and look for more evidence, right? Um, they may be able to use that to get the warrant they need to then come to your house and find the equipment that you've been using. Um, okay, yeah. So it, it's, it's, that's just one of those things that you have to be aware. Like, um, like I said, when you get to a national level, whether it's the FBI, a foreign country, if you're the kind of person who likes to go attack, other nations, it becomes significantly harder to do, and you have to take significantly more steps. And then it starts to become cost prohibitive, right? How much money do you have? How much money does the FBI have to find your ass, right? Um, those numbers are far different in most cases. Um, you know, we're not all billionaire super geniuses like, you know, Bruce Wayne or, um, you know, Tony Stark. We can't, you know, we don't have tons of money we could throw into a solution that, you know, would defeat whatever the FBI can throw at us. Um, so those are important things to remember. Um, you know, my prime advice would be just don't commit an illegal act. And <laughs> probably don't uh, cheat on your spouse would be another good one. Um, so if, you know, if, if um, where I would recommend this is, like I said, the legitimate, the prime legitimate legal case I can see for this in the U.S. where you're less likely to at least be doing it, very sketchy in my mind, is the person who does have, who is closeted, who doesn't want their friends or family to know about their sexuality for whatever reason, but they still want to be able to experience it the way they want, that's the method by which I can see this being most legitimate. This is also, I think, far more useful um, in nations where you've got, um, where you've got uprising. Now, some people would argue that it would be important here, for, heaven forbid we ever have to uprise against the government. Um, our world is not ending, trust me. Um, so, any other questions? Yep. There's one more here. Uh, I know the first set of uh, challenges are different, but would you say it's easier or harder for to do proper offset for somebody who is a traveler a lot? They for work, they travel every other week somewhere. And in doing so, they might take whatever activities they're doing with them as they're going. Right. Does that overall make it easier because now it disperses your activity over a larger scale, or does it make it easier to track because now they can tie that to your travel patterns? Right. So that's actually a good question. Does is for for somebody who travels all the time, does it make OPSEC easier or harder? Um, again, I think that comes back down to who's your target, right? If your target is to avoid doing something that your spouse or family you don't want them to know about, but it's not necessarily illegal, um, and maybe not necessarily immoral, um, then, then in those situations, it's probably easier for you to hide, um, right? Because they're, they're not looking to see where you are every place. And even if they had some suspicion of you, of you, and they had somebody watching you at home, those, trust me, those PIs aren't flying around the country following you to see what the heck you're doing when you're on the road, um, unless your significant other has a lot of money. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the, the other side is I think it honestly would probably be quite a lot easier for folks um, to get caught if you're being looked at by a law enforcement or legal perspective because now there are patterns to follow, right? Now you can see... If they manage to find, if they manage to trace you back to wherever you're connecting your VPN from, right? And now they're seeing you over here, and next week you're over here, and next week you're over here. Now they're like, okay, well, somebody's doing a lot of traveling. Can they correlate that, right? So that becomes a lot easier in my mind for them, potentially. Um, which I then think means that, you know, now if you're doing that, I think it goes back to having more virtual infrastructure, right? Trying to, trying to minimize the risk of somebody finding out where you're physical presence is. So if you can keep that physical presence hidden, then that can potentially... And some of it, too, can also be about choice, right? So, like, um, some of the different access methods, I don't know if it's still this way, but it used to be whenever you connected to Starbucks, it always said you're in the middle of fucking Oklahoma. Um, I don't know 
if they're still if all the wirelesses are still that way. Um, and I'm also not I can't state whether or not Starbucks could actually tell them which Starbucks you were at if they went and looked. Probably not. I'd be surprised if they could. Um, seeing as I can barely tell half the time where people are in my network, I doubt, somehow doubt Starbucks, which is significantly larger, can figure that out. Um, especially when most of it's free guest. I mean, how, and they probably have very minimal legal obligation to actually track it. Um, so I think that's a big, you know, ultimately it's how can I keep from being found and caught? So. Anything else? I'm kind of, I'm out of time, but I can probably get one more question in.